uh, obligation, but a responsibility to do whatever it takes to make sure that that you can't look the other way. That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, the whistleblower laws this council approves when the city is wrong in the treatment of employees or in the actions that the city takes through direct action, uh, we reimburse employees for their attorneys. We do this on an annual basis, unfortunately. Council does have a different route. It may not be a judicial body, but it does have investigative powers. And those powers and the powers of subpoena are granted through the city code. When it is warranted that actions of city government go too far, and that is a decision the council has to make through five members of council, uh, those investigative powers are triggered. Uh, we chose not as five members to use that, and we found ourselves now in this situation. We could have started an investigation. We have the power to hire an attorney. We have the power to the attorney to have subpoena powers, and the council to have subpoena powers. We chose not to do that. We chose the different route. Um, it's an unusual circumstance in that the law department represents both sides. And in representing both the zoning administrator and the Zoning Board of Adjustment, um, the plaintiffs in the case needed to seek outside legal counsel. Um, it's not a situation that happens often, but it's a situation that does occur. Um, as far as the issues on this requires five votes of counsel and that it needs a debate and to be publicly aired, that's what we've been doing for 30 minutes. And it can't be approved without a vote of counsel of five members of council, and certainly there is a debate that is occurring. What's missing um, is rules for engagement of a council attorney. And uh, Mr. Urbana could put together, I thought, a pretty good list. I'll read it to you, and I'll share it with council, and I think that we need to adopt rules in the future. But I don't think that the actions that council took um, Certainly, in the case where the uh, actions of uh, Lamar went, uh, would warrant that we should not have legal protection as elected officials or as just city employees trying to right a wrong. Council's attorney contract can only be engaged if a member or members of the council or staff are legally threatened or legally imperiled due to their actions as a member of council, if there is a reasonable belief that the member are being unduly pressured not to perform their chartered duties, and the solicitor cannot provide adequate representation due to limited resources or an apparent or perceived conflict. The written request with a thorough explanation must first be submitted to the clerk. A member or members are seeking legal assistance on a citywide legislative matter, and the solicitor cannot supply the information in a reasonable time, period of time where there is an apparent conflict. In such a case, the members must obtain the written support of five members of council to engage the attorney. A member or members are seeking a legal interpretation of the city charter or code of ordinances, and the solicitor cannot supply the information in a reasonable period of time where there is an apparent conflict. In such a case, the members must obtain the written support of five members of council to engage the attorney. For use in a council investigation that has been approved by resolution, an outside legal counsel should not be obtained for personal, purely political, or city council district specific use. And I think those are. Uh, good rules to live by. Uh, the question is, what do we do at this point when clearly there were uh, legal costs that had to be incurred in order to take action where there appeared to be a direct conflict? Uh, we have the second round, starting with Mr. Mosnick, followed by Mr. Dowd, followed by Mr. Krause. Let me make a suggestion, and because the council president always goes back to how I spend my dollars, um, that would be my suggestion, that these four members of council go out and spend their miscellaneous services and staff dollars for an attorney that they went and got. I went, and I'm very proud to say, on more than one occasion, out on my own and hired an attorney. I hired Bob Kennedy with a group of neighbors to fight uh, a company that wanted to put up a 180-foot cell phone tower behind Esther Street in Overbrook. The neighbors were going to try to raise funds to get an attorney. 
I have miscellaneous services and staff dollars in my office that were used to hire that attorney so they wouldn't have to. And I was successful. Um, we won that case, uh, and that cell phone tower is not in that neighborhood today. I also hired an attorney with miscellaneous services money and staff dollars uh, to represent a group of people that lived on Plainview Avenue. It was my decision as a council member to do this on my own. I hired the attorney. We forced uh, a daycare to take a dumpster filled with dirty diapers off the street. It was a two-year battle. We were successful. If I'd have acted like the four members of council acted, George, I could have went out. I could have got five members to vote on it if I wanted to. And I could have had the city pay for it. But I didn't do that. And if I knew I couldn't get five members to vote on it, I wouldn't have went out and spent it and then came afterwards and asked for council to okay it, which is happening right now. Mrs. Harris makes a point about process. This should have been handled the right way through the normal process. And if it was, this bill would have came before us before an, att an attorney was hired, and then council members would have voted on whether or not we should do it or not. And if it didn't get the votes, we wouldn't have moved forward. But a min minority of council members knew it wouldn't get the votes, so decided to go do it anyway. W was there an RFP for that attorney or the, or the law a firm that they used? Probably not. I'd like to know if there was. Uh, was there a certain percentage of minority participation through that attorney? Was that part of the RFP that went out to get that attorney? I don't know. That should have been discussed when it came to the table before a decision was made to go hire an attorney. But it wasn't. When we say we, Councilman Peduto made some very good points. When we say we and council, we mean five members of council, not four. And, and Councilman Kraus, who happened to just leave the room, his question to you was, this isn't unusual. If, if a director of the city would go out and spend money and then come to this table and ask us to okay it later, and a comment like that, this isn't unusual, I would feel bad for that director because him and some new members of council would have a hissy fit. You went and spent money without us. And then they go do it. You guys down there, you talk the talk. It's time to walk the walk. And that's not happening. I use the word hypocritical on more than one occasion. If we're going to live by what we say, start doing it. Don't come to me with a bill after you spent the money. You went out and got an attorney and spent the money, and then you're going to come and say, it's not unusual. This isn't process. This debate should have happened before an attorney was hired. And then if five members of council wanted to go hire an attorney, go ahead. But they didn't. I didn't go and get an attorney and ask someone else to pay for it. I didn't go round up five votes of council to pay for my attorney, for my cause. It was the right thing to do what I did. And I'm very proud that I used that money to support the neighbors in my district and in the city of Pittsburgh. There's a process involved. This is highly unusual, and the normal process would have been that we talk about this stuff before an attorney is hired. And that wasn't, that didn't happen. And it's unfortunate. And I won't support spending slush fund dollars on a cause of minority council members just the way they want to. If, if money's going to be spent Five members need to vote on it, in affirmative, before it's spent, not after. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mutznick. We have Mr. Dowd followed by Mr. Krause. I just want to make sure that when we're talking about this matter, we're thinking about uh, the fact that there are actually multiple matters, as Council President Shields has referred to them. Um, and I want to distinguish two sets of matters um, around which legal counsel might be hired. 
The first is the action that was filed in the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Uh, he referred to that earlier. I assume he now has the numbers. Um, there was an action that was, that was filed Four members of council, as members of council, filed in the Zoning Board of Adjustment an appeal of a permit. Uh, as an individual, I had already filed. In fact, I, I had already paid the $500 and hired an attorney on my own. Um, that was an action that I took and that they took. That is not an action that council took. That is not an action that the legislative body for the city of Pittsburgh took. It is not something that was in any way authorized by this body. That there were four members and one citizen does not also does not authorize the expenditure of those dollars. And that is a, I think, critical and important part of this conversation. The second action is a civil action. That was an action that was taken by Lamar against five members of council and one of those members also slash as a citizen because they weren't sure how to catch me. So they figured they'd try to get me in two different ways. Um, that's a different matter. So there are two, two matters. There is a, an action by council and there's also now, um, Council President Shields is right, there's a, a court action that has been stayed. It does breathe. It does still continue to exist. But that is, that is something to which council must react. Right, at some point, not yet. Council took an uh, council members, members of council took an action. Council itself did not take this action. And I agree with my colleagues, uh, Councilman Harris and Councilman Montenegh. Process and precedent. That's what they're saying. You hear them talking about process and precedent. From the process standpoint, as legislators, our responsibility is to lay out a law which is a framework for action. It's a framework for action for citizens in the city. We are not authorized, actually, unless we authorize ourselves, to take those actions. We simply, as legislators, lay out the law, the framework in which people act. We can, as citizens, and this is why, I mean, if we want to get into this, this is why I filed my action as a citizen, not as a council member. As citizens, we act. As council members, we frame the context in which citizens act. All right? So when, when, uh, when, when four members of council file, they're actually really, to be honest, they're not filing as council, and they're not even really honestly filing as council members because they have no power as individual council members. As a council member, I have zero power. Sorry, Mr. Deasy, you have zero power as a council member. You only have power actually as a body constituted with a quorum and casting a vote. That's the only moment when we as a body can act. All right, going back, council, uh, Mr. Um, Pedudo always likes to talk about 101, and I think that's right. So here we are. We have no action in the ZBA by the city council. Zero. We have five members, or five, five individuals who are related somehow to council, but not actually, that's not council itself. As, as esoteric and ridiculous as people might think this conversation is, it's extremely important. Put a different action out there. Put a different lawsuit. Imagine something else taking place, all right? Then you're beginning to, you've messed up a process, okay? And you've set, quite frankly, a terrible precedent. And I think it's important to point out that if we allow this, if we allow a post-fact expenditure to come to us and have no problem with it, in fact, say, gold star, excellent work, then we have just asked for millions upon millions upon hundreds of millions of dollars of similar expenditures. We've asked the administration to come to us on a weekly basis, having acted and now asking for after-the-fact appropriations. And that is a terrible and, I think, damaging, destructive precedent for us to set at this point in time. There is this matter of the investigation, which uh, Councilman Peduto brings up. Um, I also oppose the idea of an investigation because it's very clear to me that there are critical questions, legal questions involved with the actions around the signing of that permit. And this body, although we might have the legal right to investigate, has not the capacity. We are not, as I said at that time, investigators. We have an ethics board, 
both here in the city and in the state of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We have a district attorney. We have a federal prosecutor. We have people who are equipped, trained, and professional investigators. And if they choose, and maybe some of them have in fact chosen, others might still choose, that investigation can take place in those ways. Ultimately, we're talking about public dollars. This body, as it's constituted, did not authorize the action in the Zoning Board of Adjustment. This body did not authorize the action, which we are now being asked to fund. That is not acceptable. I know enough about the Home Rule Charter. I know enough about the governmental process to know that that is unacceptable. And if we are going to fix this process, if we are going to do the right thing here, then I would urge my colleagues to accept the amendment which I now move. I would add to this a second sentence which would say, no dollars shall be expended before a vote of counsel authorizing the legal action necessitating such agreements with legal counsel. I move that we amend the document to read that sentence as well. There's a motion and a second discussion on the motion. If I may? Mr. Dunn. We at no time, I believe, should allow post-fact, unless we're talking emergency situations, critical decision moments, we should allow no expenditures without an appropriate approval of counsel. No expenditures. And so all that we're doing here is saying that counsel, before it expends any of these dollars, would have a discussion and a debate about the expenditure of those dollars, which, by the way, can still be done. We can have a discussion and a debate about the action that was taken in the ZBA and whether or not that was appropriate, if my colleagues so choose. But at this point, this amendment would require that any dollar that comes out of that account is given first, sorry, given only after a majority of counsel, what's necessary for this body to act, has approved, has authorized the action that's requiring legal counsel. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion to amend? Reverend Burgess. Was that a request to speak? Yes. I wasn't sure. Yeah. I tend to usually agree with Councilman Dowd, and I don't disagree now. I believe that in normal circumstances, every dollar that we spend should be pre-approved by counsel. I agree with that wholeheartedly. No question about it. I also agree with his exemption that emergency circumstances. I also believe this was an emergency circumstance. We can disagree with that, but I believe it was. I still think, and we can continue this debate, I still think the debate is not helpful. And this will be my concluding statements about this. I really believe we should approve this and move on. It is, in my opinion, even if we think mistakes were made, we can agree that mistakes were made on a variety of parties. I think we agree, at least some people thought it was urgent and emergent. So I would hope, I am asking that we find a way to approve this and for the good of the city and council to approve this and move on. And I'm not sure how this, I don't think this amendment will do that. I think it will then cause us to have more discussions that I think are counterproductive. We still have discussion on the amendment. Mr. Cross was first, followed by Mr. Shields, followed by Mr. Dallas. Anybody else has any other comments? Please keep the comments to the amendment. If I may, I would rather leave that to the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Thank you, counsel. That concludes argument in this case.
And we're also here because what didn't happen, and what didn't happen is, is that as is provided for in the charter, we have access to counsel, outside counsel, as provided by law. We have the ability to investigate. Uh, all those things. Uh, the claim that we can't is simply not true. It's just you invent it. You invent and appropriate whatever you need to do the job that counsel is authorized to do. We don't have roles of engagement. Uh, we don't have anything here uh, about how we would proceed with counsel. That was probably the biggest, most difficult issue that we have with regard to that. I, I agree with Ms. Uh, Reverend Burgess in the sense that this, this bill is about paying a legal bill because some folks tried to do something which I think was completely illegal and feel somewhat vindicated because they beat a hasty retreat in the face of determined opposition. And, you know, as I said, I don't have a problem with amending this down and so forth, the money amounts. Uh, we got good, competent counsel. I don't think there's any question about the legal counsel we acquired, uh, nor the actions taken by our counsel and so forth. And I think that, that that's not at issue here. What's at issue is the bill to the legal counsel. And the side issues become, we don't have a process for retention of outside legal counsel. Uh, what do you do in a circumstance like uh, the Lamar deal and everything else? But, you know, to amend this now, would be in, the, in using your amendment on this particular piece of legislation, although certainly warranted, is not warranted on this particular bill. We need to have a more fulsome uh Ordinance. We need a very. We need any ordinance at this point about dealing with those issues. And all due respect, I didn't bring up, you know, that because well, I won't go into that. But just just on the on the on this amendment to amend this now with that particular language, given the pending amendments we're expecting from Reverend Burgess, they would somewhat be in conflict. And I think we'd be better off to reserve the types of amendment that you're offering here into. Uh, legislation uh, for crafting an ordinance about retention of legal counsel in, in certain matters for this council as provided for by law and by charter. Any other comment on the amendment? Mr. Dell. Point out the logic of the amendment so that people uh, can understand <clears throat> and so that my colleagues think carefully. All I'm saying is that this body, that no dollars, to be very clear, no dollar be expended before council approves the action for which the dollars are to be expended, which is the very essence of our existence. That is the very essence. So to, so to reject this amendment is to reject our existence and our reason for existence. Um, and I think I, I, I put it out there. I, 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 I always agree with Reverend Burgess. Uh, and when I don't, I try to find out why, because uh, I know that he's, He's, he's got some, some good lines to some good logic and some good thinking and some good hope. Um, but it's okay that we disagree here, uh, perhaps. My, my point is simply this. We should not expend dollars unless we've authorized the action. I told my colleagues squarely, I do not support this. This did not come forward in a timely fashion because I did not support it and there were not votes. Perhaps there are today votes, but there were not then the votes. Okay? And you can carry the day today, but you will do so having defeated, if, if necessary, this amendment. Because on principle, it is not acceptable. It is completely unacceptable to reject my amendment and, quite frankly, to pass this bill. Thank you. Mr. Krause. Well, just briefly, if I, if I may. And my understanding is, is there are monies that are allocated that are set aside that council can seek its independent council. Is that correct? Legal you're asking me? Council, yes. It's part of the city code. Exactly. Okay. And, and here before me are any number of expenditures that take place on a daily basis in the city of Pittsburgh for travel expenses, which I'm sure there is money set aside for, but each individual expenditure does not come to this table for approval. $1,362. $35, dollars $357, $1,700, $606, $1,700, $13,000, on and on and on. Every individual expenditure for monies that are allocated do not come to this table for approval. I won't vote for this amendment. Thank you. Any other discussion on the amendment? Um, our next bill 
which I hope to get to sometime today, uh, is a resolution providing for the issuance of $3,156 warrant in favor of George and Sophia Boostus, 862 Western Avenue, in settlement of a claim for sidewalk damage due to a city tree roots. We never approved that. We can't vote for it. We didn't approve that before the tree caused the damage. We didn't approve a slip and fall before someone slipped and fall, fell. We didn't approve Catherine McNeely's decision to seek a settlement with the city of Pittsburgh when she was improperly taken down to the rank of lieutenant. We didn't seek any of those until after the damage had happened. Um, this, this idea that you need five members of council in order to seek restitution for costs to either protect yourself or protect what you think is the vital interest of the city of Pittsburgh is not valid. It would be something I would never support. Because you know what? I hope there comes a day when I'm the one person who's standing up and doing what I believe in. And coming back to this council and telling you why I feel justified in asking for money to get legal representation to protect myself. I was sued for $2 million. And you're telling me I shouldn't hire a lawyer or that I have to come to this council, put a bill up, wait two weeks, get approval, try to get five votes, and wait to not have a lawyer to find out what my legal rights are? And when I find out my solicitor is actually representing the other side, that I have to use that as my representation? It was requested that all of my personal records, including phone, email, text messages, be turned over to the attorney for Lamar and that of my staff, but I'm not allowed to have a lawyer to tell me what my legal rights are, and the only other course that I have is to use a city solicitor that's representing the other side? No. I have the right to go get a solicitor. Then I have to come back to this table and try to get five votes to say why it is justifiable to use those funds for the protection of the city in order to be able to pay those bills. Councilman, with all due respect, the law department, neither the law department as a whole nor I, were representing the other side. The other side was Lamar. I understand what uh, some of you are Actually, saying. Actually, Mr. Regarding Spector, the other side conflict. was Susan Tomasco, the zoning administrator in the city of Pittsburgh. Point of order. Point of order. I, I want to be very clear. If, 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 earlier, I tried to distinguish between two actions. You were sued in a civil action. I was sued in a civil action. That's still pending. We have. I actually have sought the support of this. No, 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 just a minute. Please. The ZBA action, the Zoning Board of Adjustment, is an action which some members of council is claiming is as an action of council. It is not an action, and it is not comparable to a slip and fall. It is not comparable. In fact, in a slip and fall or Commander McNeely situation, all of those individuals went out and hired attorneys as individuals. No, I'm talking about the amendment. The amendment, and that you said you wanted to speak on what. Right, the but, but there's a difference this between the cases that you represented. Money the cases that you represented. Been... Is, is there? There's a motion to call for the vote. Is there any other discussion? Could we please read the amendment so it's clear to the public as well as to the council? Certainly. I'm sorry, I didn't get your amendment, okay. Council. Would you mind? I'll read it very amendment. carefully. Uh, the amendment would be a, a, a final sentence reading, no dollars shall be expended from you know, this, this whatever number of dollars it will be before a vote of council authorizing the legal action necessitating such agreements with legal counsel. Reverend Burgess? No. Mr. Deasy? Aye. Mr. Dowd? Aye. Mrs. Harris? No. Mr. Krause? No. Mr. Motznick? Aye. Ms. Payne? Mr. Shields? No. Mr. Peduto, Chair? No. Ayes 3, noes 5. We're back. The bill before us, the speaker who was next on the list is Mr. Krause. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I want to make, well, first of all, Councilwoman Harris, I want to thank you publicly for your support, and I appreciate your uh, integrity in doing the right thing, and I want to make certain that I put that out in public for all to know. Um, the, the waters are getting very muddied here, and I want the public to understand exactly what took place here. We had every right to go to the ZBA and file an appeal, 
and no one would question that we had the right to do that. But Lamar countered and sued us. We didn't enter into, a, into litigation with Lamar. They used intentional and purposeful threats and intimidation to make us back down. They sued us. We did not sue them. We were merely protecting the interests of the people of the city of Pittsburgh. Whether you want to debate your or the solicitor's office part or role in representing the administration, it was clear we did not have a legal opinion at this time. There was no indication as to what way or what stand your office would be taking in, in regards to this matter. We chose to put our personal and our professional lives on the line knowing it was absolutely the correct thing to do to protect the interest of the people of the city of Pittsburgh. Certainly there had to be privileged conversations that took place from the solicitor's office and the mayor's office and uh, Pat Ford's office and zoning. We merely reacted to the fact that we were being sued for $2 million over a ZBA appeal, which was intended to intentionally threaten us to back down. We had no other recourse other than to seek some kind of legal representation. Please keep in mind, we did not have an opinion no matter how often we asked for that opinion, we did not have that opinion from the solicitor's office when we sought legal counsel to not only protect our personal lives, our professional lives, but at most to protect the people of the city of Pittsburgh, which I might add, ultimately came around to be the exact thing to do because Lamar did back down, and they did pull the, their, their permit, uh, or, or the request for their permit, the application for their permit. And if you remember, on March the 4th, that was exactly what we asked this administration to do. Please stand up, show some leadership, and ask Lamar to pull the permit. And they chose not to. And it wasn't until we engaged in this tap dance and put our legal, our, our professional, and our personal lives on the line to defend the people of this city, did the administration choose then to do the right thing and pull that permit? And that never would have happened had we not stood up. And I do not believe it is unreasonable to have the amount of $11,000 allocated for the legal expenses that were incurred to protect this city. Third round, we'll start with Mr. Dowd. Is there anyone else? We, Mr. Motznik, Mr. Dowd, Mr. Kraus have spoken in the second round. Just want to be clear on it as well. Anyone who doesn't think that there was a connection and that parties were all interested in this, including the URA, the mayor's office, and Lamar, is fooling themselves and being disingenuous to the public. Anyone who saw the mayor's chief of the staff's email that went to council members threatening us with political corruption over the process of filing a zoning board appeal and then seeing Lamar's attorney's actions that mirrored it almost to the word. And you're going to tell me there wasn't some sort of, and we're supposed to use the solicitor to protect ourselves, our integrity and our personal property in a $2 million lawsuit, and then to come back to this body and have to beg because what we did was right in protecting the people of the city of Pittsburgh? Being disingenuous might be too kind of term. I'd like to try to bring this to hopefully an agreeable conclusion. I've heard Mrs. Harris's support for the $40,000 amount, and I do understand, but I 
I am, I am also sensitive to the concerns raised by my good friend Mr. Dowd in terms of Council's actions predating any expenditures. I, I'm, I'm very sensitive to that. I'm also very sensitive to the solicitor and conversations we've had privately. I understand his position. I also do this to protect the solicitor. It is my intention. Also, as we've seen today, the, as I've said, discussion on this topic is counterproductive. It is not helpful. It does not move our city forward. So the amendment I make today now is to is to amend this to $11,000. What it will do is it will pay any past legal fees, even though those legal fees may have been incurred retroactively. You know, we're paying for it retroactively. It does not keep any money, new money into the council. So anything going forward, this council will have to come and approve, and hopefully it puts this matter to rest and to bed. That is my intention. There's a motion. Second. Second discussion, Mr. Dow. I am. Um, thank you for that. Um, we, we, we will continue to disagree, but less so now. <laughs> uh, and I will continue to try to find a way to see uh, your side of things um, and my colleague's side of things. I'm, I'm going to try to articulate something here that from the beginning I haven't been able to entirely, and I'm going to try. There is a distinct and clear difference between our role here at this moment, or actually more specifically our role on Tuesdays at, the, at those tables, and our roles as we stand out in the community. And there is also our role as citizens, right? And I think it's extremely important to keep in mind that no one blocked anyone, no conflicts of interest prohibited anyone from finding legal counsel. I filed as an individual because, again, as I said before, as a legislator, I believe that we set frameworks and that as citizens we act. And I think that's an important distinction. You could call it esoteric, academic. You could call it ridiculous. You could call it whatever you want. But in the matter that we are talking about, there were two particular actions I continue to emphasize. A ZBA appeal, an appeal before the Zoning Board of Adjustment, I have gone out, I hired two, I think, spectacular attorneys, Pat McGrail and Isabel Storch, who represented me as an individual in that matter. I owe them money. I must now pay them. Not exactly happy about that, not exactly pleased to have, have, to have filed that in the first place, not happy that the permit was given in the first place, and I agree with all the comments, and do not, as I think Councilman Burgess uh, aptly points out, do not want to go there. Do not want to have that discussion at this time. If we were going to discuss the action before the, about the zoning board, then we can do that. This was a tangled mess. And the best way to have uh, addressed that, I think, was for council to step out of its role as a body and to step into its role as citizens to file that action. I had a personal attorney who helped me file and I think successfully, um, eventually we reached a resolution whereby Lamar revoked its permit. The city revoked Lamar's permit. That is eventually what happened as a result of an action that an individual took, not a legislative body. As a result of those uh, filings, the two different appeals, the one and the four, as a result of those appeals, Lamar took civil action against the council, against four members who filed as council members and against me who filed as an individual but also as a council member. I spoke at length with my attorneys when that, appeal, when that lawsuit was given to me. My attorneys agreed to represent me as Patrick Dowd citizen and the solicitor's office, having worked with my attorneys, agreed to represent me, at least, as Patrick Dowd city council member. To argue that we have to have outside counsel for anything that involves any of us is a fallacious argument. And in fact, it's really a dangerous precedent. To argue that we always have to use the solicitor is also wrong. All right, I want to be clear about that. There are moments when different actions are correct. But the point here, this is extremely important, the act of filing an appeal in the Zoning Board of Adjustment was not an action that this council body authorized. And we are now being asked to pay for that. I don't understand how we could even logically think that that's acceptable. What if 
four of us decided to file a lawsuit of some ridiculous sort that others disagreed with. And I can think of lots of ridiculous answers, examples. This may not have been a ridiculous example, but think of it as an algebraic equation. What's the, what's the x here? All right, now substitute in any other x, and what does this look like? To simply say, as Council President Shield says, we have a bill to pay is not acceptable. I have lots of bills as an individual. I can't ask, I don't ask, and I won't ask the citizens of this city to pay for those bills. I will pay for my personal bills. And my colleagues, with all due respect, must pay for their bills. Unless this body authorizes the action. If I got a car, which was a debate here, if I got a car and charged the city and said, hey guys, and women, let's pay for this, and I got five people to vote for that, that's unacceptable. We would not tolerate that. How can we do this after the fact? We have not authorized the Zoning Board of Adjustment uh, to, uh, uh, action. If these dollars are going to ex be expended around the civil suit, we need to first authorize them. And I actually think that's, a, that's something that we could imagine taking place. That's not an issue. After the fact on the Zoning Board of Adjustment appeal, that's not so. Unless, you know, and you rejected my amendment, unless you want to start paying things after the fact. Which is exactly, if I were the administration, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be bringing bills over here after the fact. They're, they're probably smarter and have a better ethic than that, but that's, that's not right. What we are doing ourselves is not right. I, I genuinely urge, at a minimum, to table this bill, to rethink it, to reevaluate it. And I'll just ask one more time, what are the 11,000 or so dollars going to? And I think it's important, uh, Council President Shield had said he would put the docket numbers on there. I think we need to be explicit. I think that's important because the public needs to know what exact legal actions are we paying for, past actions, future actions. Because there might be, just so the public's clear, the civil action hangs in abeyance and there are as yet nil or near nil expenditures associated with that civil action. As far as the ZBA appeal, there are expenditures. So to argue that this is to protect us is not exactly true. It's not a true representation. These are, as Council President Shield said, we have a bill, we've got to pay it. Well, let's see the bill. We have all sorts of, of bills here that we have to vote on later today. Let's see the docket numbers so that we know, before we vote on this, exactly what we're paying for. We vote on the amendment. No, we voted on the amendment. No, we have not. Oh, we voted on my amendment. And I made the motion, and I, I don't have the docket numbers in front of me yet. We weren't willing to have the clerk insert the docket numbers for final vote. Pardon me? That's not the vote. That my amendment, the amendment was oh. the vote. Yeah, my guy. My, can we vote on the amendment to reduce this to $11,000? Just so we're clear that my comments were addressed to that amendment, and in that we need to see the exact dollar figures. We have, you know, invoices for this. My understanding that the way this would go, I, I didn't want to get, I'm, I'm trying to, to speak less, but I, I think I at least have to talk about my understanding. My understanding is that the law department, this, this, this money actually, the law department, um, all of my understanding, I'm not sure if I'm right, but that this, this, the legal fees would be paid through the law department, that this money would be set up within the law department, invoices would go to the law department. If there were any invoices were inappropriate, I'm sure Mr. Spector and his office have the authority and the wherewithal to, to go through the, 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 the um, itemized costs, and I'm, I, I feel confident we'd reject any expenditures that he thought was out of line. And so that's the process of this, and I think that's, that's an administrative task. Um, so, and I do hear, but... So, my, my, in order to move this on, can we vote on the, on the amendment that reduces this to $11,000 and then anything with that, the reason I'm doing this is so that anything that goes beyond this, anything that comes that we need to do ahead of time, anything we need to do to continue actions would have to come before this council and have a five vote, five vote majority. So that's the yes, issue. Question. 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 Mr. S uh, Solicitor, do you know if, if this were to pass, do you know what uh, expenditures you would be authorized to expend? Well, 
I haven't seen the bill. I, um, Do you know uh, which bills would be acceptable bills to invoices to pay? No. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments on the, Mr. Krause? Uh, Mr. Spector, could you please read the first line of that? These are very first line. Uh, City Council Clerk. No, that's the top line. The top oh, I'm line. Sorry. The I'm following sorry. invoices. The, other the following line. invoices are submitted for your approval May 7, 2008. Okay, submitted for approval. Has that money been spent? Has those bills, it have no, those no, bills me to been read it. paid? Yes. Um, it appears to me that the Sean to Paris, yes, that's a reimbursement for $12. SBM Electronics is fax repair, presumably already done. Um, I don't know what the other two are. May I have the floor, Mr. Dow? Thank you. Would it be your somewhat general opinion that the checks have been written and they are now coming to this table for approval for that expenditure. Yes or no, please. Uh, well, the checks could not have been written. Okay. Solicitor Specter, do we not approve expenditures on invoice at this table every week that have most likely been paid for before they came to this table for approval? No. But wait, let, let me, I, I understand your point, you're not and you're not wrong. What we often do is that we permit the service to be rendered in many cases, and then... Great, which is exactly the point that we make here. The service has been rendered, there is a bill that a check needs to be written for on invoice that's coming to this table for approval. Does that happen all the time, every week at this table? It does happen. Thank you. But that is not my concern. My concern goes to the basics of this, and that is whether an action by less than a majority of council can bind the council or the city for reimbursement of the actions taken by a minority. It's that simple. We did not file as the council of the city of Pittsburgh. We filed as William Peduto, Douglas Shields, Bruce Krause, Reverend Ricky V. Burgess, and we are members of council, employees of the city of Pittsburgh that are entitled to legal, legal representation, and let me reiterate, we did not instigate the legal action. We were sued personally and professionally as a tactic of intimidation to make us back away from this. We did not recklessly enter into legal action. We were defending our personal, our professional lives, and the taxpayer, the people of the city of Pittsburgh. And may I add that because we did have the perfect legal representation here, we probably saved tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars that would have been spent in legal fees had we not had the proper representation. When it was filed that this would go to federal court, what happened? Immediately Lamar wanted to settle. It could have been dragged on forever, but we had professional and, and perfect legal counsel to protect the people of the city of Pittsburgh. And what happened when our counsel countered with discovery on Lamar, the administration, on uh, Pat Ford, what happened? Immediately it was settled. And they were settled because we had adequate professional legal counsel to protect the citizens of this city from undue and reckless litigation that was not instigated by this council but by Lamar Advertising to intimidate and threaten us to back away. Let me answer your question very simply, or your statement. To the extent, and Councilman Dowd, if you will permit, I will explain what occurred with respect to your representation. Maybe. Yes, but I, but I, he has a privilege too, and you do too, and I wanted to make sure I was not breaching my privilege with him, um, even though I acted through your attorneys. To the extent that 
individual council members or any city employee would be sued as you were in your official capacities, we would be willing to represent you. And we did tell Councilman Dowd's attorneys that to the extent that he was sued in his official capacity, we would be willing to represent him. He chose not to do that. His attorney so informed us. And we would have been willing to get you outside council for actions taken in your official capacities. My recollection is that the same offer was made to the four of you and that we received a letter, I believe from Hugh McGough, to the effect that they chose, that he and you all chose not to be represented by the solicitor's office and we would have been perfectly happy and proper and acting properly to agree to outside council with respect to your official capacities. And that is the fact. That's what happened. Mr. Motzek had requested a comment on the amendment. If you still have the floor. Just to, I'm glad Councilman Krauss brought up the invoices to you and this body. That's how this should be paid. A service was rendered. The four members that went to render that service should then submit the proper paperwork to the president for approval and they need to pay for it out of their miscellaneous services or office staff dollars like I did when I hired an attorney. These members, these people that are on here, this James Shepard who works in my office is an intern and that check won't be written until it's okayed here by council. And if it's not okayed by council, the check won't be written. There's a process in place. If we follow the process like we talk about all the time, that's the process to pay this. It's three grand a piece, I believe. If people want to do it the right way, that's the right way. Thank you. We have a motion to amend with a second. The amendment will reduce the amount. Mr. Burgess is amending the second. The amendment, if I may. Mr. Shields. If I would like to respectfully request that we increase that to $12,000 because we still don't have an end to the action on the $2 million lawsuit in the court of common pleas. And as I said, if the attorney that we hired, now if it's a matter of paperwork being filed, it's some kind of a press fee or an augment of the removal action, I don't have any objection to the city law department finishing off that case when and if it is ever finished off as represented in the settlement by Lamar, which they haven't done yet. So I'll let it go. We'll go with this. I'm happy. There's an amendment by Reverend Burgess. This has been seconded by Mr. Motsnick. If the clerk could please call the roll. Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Deasy. Aye. Mr. Dowd. Abstain. Mrs. Harris. No. Mr. Krause. Aye. Mr. Motsnick. Aye. Mr. Payne. Mr. Shields. Aye. Mr. Peduto, chair. Aye. Aye. Six knows one point of abstention. The bill, I'm sorry, the bill is amended. Is there any final conversation? Mr. Dowd. We've heard from the solicitor that the amended bill does not offer clarity as to the accounts that he's supposed to settle. If invoices come to him, I mean, in theory, because it doesn't specify in this resolution what action, I could, in theory, submit legal action. So there needs to be, I believe, clarity as to the legal actions that need to be funded. I assume that we're talking about Attorney McGough, who represented four members of council, representing the Council on the Zoning Board of Adjustment appeal of the permit for the LED sign, the proposed LED sign at the Grant Street Transportation Center, and this civil action. Those are two different matters, and I want clarity for myself and for the public, most importantly, as to which or what actions, if it's both actions, that we're paying for. What, as a public, what is the public paying for? Are they paying for the ZBA appeal? 
which, by the way, could endanger, could embolden the civil action. That's another matter. And are we paying for the civil action? And if so, I would ask respectfully that one of the supporters of the bill propose an amendment so that we, the public, we here and the public have clarity as to precisely what we are authorizing. Because we hear further from Council President Shields that there are additional expenditures that might come forward, and we need to know, what is this? Past and present and future? Just past and present? Just past? Before we move forward, Reverend, I would just suggest that Mr. Shields do with the docket numbers. You can do it on Tuesday. No, it's $11,000 for these two cases, Mr. Dowd, and that's it. And we're going to, and I'll make the amendment now as I proposed when I first spoke, is that to answer that question, so well put, City of Pittsburgh in connection with Zoning Board of Adjustment docket number, and we'll get that filled in, and it'll be there for final vote. If somebody is watching in the staff offices, please grab the filings and we can get the numbers in today. I think the Council is well aware, without doing DNA, what we're talking about here. The Zoning Board of Adjustment docket number will be inserted, and the Court of Common Pleas docket number will be inserted, and those funds will be limited for legal representation on those two matters. So it would, again, read, we're striking, we already struck it down to $11,000. That amendment's in the bill. So the bill will read, City of Pittsburgh in connection with Zoning Board of Adjustment docket number X, and Court of Common Pleas docket number X. And I would leave it go at that. And it noted that the clerk will then get those numbers and provide those for the final action on the bill. The bill is amended. There is a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Or let the clerk please call the roll. This is for the amendment. Reverend Burgess? Aye. Mr. Deasy? Aye. Mr. Dowd? Abstain. Mrs. Harris? Aye. Mr. Krause? Aye. Mr. Mosnick? Aye. Ms. Payne? Mr. Shields? Aye. Mr. Peduto, Chair? Aye. Aye. Seven. No is none. One abstention. Passed. The bill is amended again. Any final discussion on the bill? Mrs. Harris? I just have a concern here because it just keeps coming up that it were four council members, four council members. And, you know, there was a council member as an individual that first approached this. There were four more council people, plus the president had talked to other council people. So to just make it four and to just keep hammering it that it's four is ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comment? Mr. Dowd? I need to be very clear about this. We are authorizing expenditures for actions which, should we pass this, I mean, for which there is no authorization. The action in the Zoning Board of Adjustment, which presumably when we see the final version of this bill, will be an action that is covered by this bill. We are post-fact, after the fact, paying for that action without having authorized the action itself. And whether it was, I mean, it could in theory have been all nine of us who were supportive of the action. The point is there was no vote, no expression of the will of the body of the representation of the city of Pittsburgh authorizing this expenditure. So the public is actually, in fact, being asked to pay for an expenditure that was never authorized by its representatives in a legal and binding way. And if we want to talk about how these matters are done, I mean, clearly we all agree that the only way this body can act is when we vote. To do it after the fact is unacceptable. And I say it's a dangerous precedent. It's not following process, and it's setting a very dangerous precedent for the future. I feel like I'm droning on about that, but I think this is exceedingly important to think about. Thank you. Any other comment? I just can't let that one go. It's not a precedent. I mean, when a car breaks down that's a city vehicle that goes beyond the targeted expenses, it gets put into a shop and then we pay the bill. When a wall falls, we hire a company to fix a wall, and then we pay the bill. 
that that's why it did not come forward at that time. When, 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 when we, in the case was made that we don't go out and buy ourselves cars, but we had that entire debate about take home vehicles, and it's, it's part of it as well. This was not a perk for me. I didn't like being sued. I wasn't doing it because my home in Point Breeze is somehow affected by a billboard downtown. I did it for the people of Pittsburgh. If this council does not want to pay this bill, don't pay it. Don't abstain. Vote no. Say, I don't want to pay that bill. You pay that bill out of your own pocket. And then the people of Pittsburgh have the opportunity to be represented. That's being discussed here. To say that bills are not paid after the fact of a service being rendered and that this is the first time that's ever happened in the city's history, it's not even the first time that's going to happen in today's bills that we're voting on. So I'm sorry. I can't. I can't accept that. You know that we've set a precedent in this case, or in any case that city employees have taken action against the city, hired legal service, and then charged us for that legal service. It's, it's the way that it's done when there's a conflict of interest between the solicitor's office and the city employee. Roll call. Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Deasy. Aye. Mr. Dowd. Stay. Mrs. Harris? Aye. Mr. Krause? Aye. Mr. Motznick? No way. Ms. Payne? Mr. Shields? Aye. Mr. Perdido, Chair? Aye. Ayes 5, noes 2, when abstention, Bill has affirmative recommendation. Uh, at the discretion of the Chair, who I have to leave, and I would ask President Shields if you could take over as Chair, I'd ask that we go to Urban Recreation Committee. Mr. Dowd is the Chair for one bill. It's page 3. Three, resolution amending resolution 210 of 1989, which authorizes a lease with the Pittsburgh Center for the Arts building known as Marshall Residence, the Skate Residence, and Marshall Garage, uh, which uh, authorized assignment of the city's lease with the Pittsburgh Center of the Arts to the Pittsburgh Filmmakers, the ent entity created by the merger of the Pittsburgh Center of the Arts and Pittsburgh Filmmakers, now to authorize the mayor and director of parks and directors of finance to enter into an agreement with Pittsburgh filmmakers amending the lease dated August 1st of 89 with the Pittsburgh Center of the Arts as amended by the agreement assignment of the amendment to lease effective January 1, 2006. Second. Thank you. Would you like to tell us a little bit about this uh, Sure. Uh, thank you, Councilman. Uh, this bill, and, and certainly um, Councilman Peduto, Chairman Peduto, would um, have some input because he was the uh, impetus behind pushing this forward. Um, after much consternation, this, this bill actually involves just some simple housekeeping. Uh, it involves a matter of a structure on the properties known as the Mellon Estate, Mellon Park, that for some reason, and um, I can't find it in the records. There was a facility constructed, uh, probably looking at the architectural uh, design of it back in the 70s, probably late 80, early 80s, uh, called the Youth Hostel Building. Um, essentially, it's an unofficial structure. We have no real documentation as to its existence and why the, the building is actually there. Um, it's not listed on any of the, the earlier the maps that we, we have in our possession. But essentially, what this entails is that because of the uh, assumption of the lease by Pittsburgh filmmakers, the uh, the balance of the 30-year lease with the former uh, Pittsburgh Center for the Arts, uh, this was not contemplated as part of the original lease back in 1989. So uh, there are three structures that were clearly identified, the Marshall, the Scaife, and the Marshall Garage. Those three structures were clearly identified on the map, even though the youth hostel building is on the map, it's not identified as to why it was built or who gave permission to build it. But you know, that's um, for another day. But at this point, the uh, Center for the, uh, the Pittsburgh Filmmakers, which has successfully taken over the assumption of this lease and has really put the Center for the Arts back on sound financial footing, uh, they are now looking to be very aggressive in expanding their opportunities for programming, for classes, and for exhibits. And so the intent is to take this existing building, which is in a, an advanced a deplorable state if you, um, and I'm being kindly, um, in my estimate the building should have been torn down. Uh, they're taking this and as part of their strategic plan will go out and fundraise on their own behalf without any assistance from the city 
and to bring this building into standards that would be uh, considered acceptable with the additional um, you know, structures on that site. And at this point, I'll uh, defer to Councilman Peduto if you want to make comments on to it. It's background. just, and I, I apologize, I have to leave. I'm going to miss a flight, actually. But um, I, um, we've been working on this for over one year now, uh, Pittsburgh Center for the Arts, Pittsburgh Filmmakers. Uh, it's a shed. I mean, uh, to be kind, it's a shed. It, it's, a, it's a wooden wall shed that was for a little while the AYH for Pittsburgh. Uh, it had a bad infestation of bees that actually took out part of the roof. Uh, it leaks. It, 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 there's nothing in it right now other than storage for some equipment. And the goal of Pittsburgh Center for the Arts is to incorporate it into classroom space and to renovate it. Um, the requirement of the city is to have the money in place to show that before final uh, lease can be done uh, so that we're not just turning it over and hoping that they can do it and filmmakers and Pittsburgh Center for the Arts has agreed to do so within a certain time period. Um, I have to thank the administration for uh, their work, especially the last couple of weeks, uh, namely Director Ashley, uh, Mr. Molesky, Yvonne Schlossberg, uh, for putting this together with the Pittsburgh Center for the Arts. Sure, please. I'm trying to get my bearings here. Uh, fifth and Shady, the yellow uh, 